Well, good morning and a very, very warm welcome um, to everyone who is, who is joining us. Um, my name is Sharon Mark Taggart, one of the co-founders and directors of the Curious Piano Teachers. You have just heard um, my other co-founder um, of the Curious Piano Teachers, Dr. Sally Cathcart, playing Elaine Ney, He Is Born, which was arranged for us um, this time last year especially for us and for our members of the Curious Piano Teachers by um, the wonderful Alan Bullard. And on the other screen, we have Hannah O'Toole, who is our community and our marketing manager. So um, I just want to say a massive thank you for everyone who is joining us this morning. <clears throat> it may not be morning for everyone um, because I know we have people registered and signed up from all over, uh, all over the world. Today, we are getting you guys ready for Christmas. And um, we are, I'm just going to double check something here in my settings before I proceed. I'm just going to check that everyone can see that's fine. Um, so, Christmas is coming. Bring a sparkle to your Christmas themed piano lessons. Um, I know it, it always seems, you know, this is only the 11th of November. It seems a little bit early, but actually, it's not really. <laughs> It comes around so, so fast. So we're going to be having fun. We're going to be demonstrating how we, um, Sally and I, bring our Christmas lessons and our Christmas repertoire um, to life with games and activities and lesson resources um, today. You're going to be getting a range of stuff for um, beginners right through um, to more advanced uh, level students, for example, Sally Play. It's inside one of our curiosity boxes. We'll be showing you that a little bit later. Um, so something for every level, we're going to be featuring how to create sign stories for your beginners. So those who have, they're literally just coming to the end of their, of their first term of lessons. Um, secondly, we're going to be looking at how to get students to work out well-known Christmas songs and carols by ear. Um, you're going to be hearing maybe a little bit more of our specially commissioned Christmas arrangements. Um, we've also, in addition to Alan Bullard, last year we had Pam Wedgwood and June Armstrong, um, and we commissioned them to write uh, Christmas arrangements for us. And then finally, engaging Christmas-themed Chris, Christmas -themed rhythm games for intermediate um, uh, level pianists. So we're also going to be showing you around the middle of the webinar, we're going to be showing you around our brand new membership site. Seems a while since we've actually done a webinar. That's because we've been so busy with this new website. It's now completely live, and we're going to show you in behind the scenes. If you're not a member, um, we'll also be showing you how you can get a month's free trial and how you can then get access to all these curious Christmas resources that we have in there. We've been collecting them from about 2015, so there's a lot of stuff. So, um, I think without further ado, um, I am going to crack on with. Yeah, Sounds good to me, Sharon. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, over, over to you, Sharon, to, uh, to crack on with the next bit, which I love this one. So off you go, Sharon. Great stuff. So I'm going to be sharing this is again a resource we created a way back in 2015. Um, I'm just going to pop myself onto spotlight here. And um, it is We Three Kings. Now, not everyone knows this, but a lot of people know this. Um, I'm just going to give you a little play for you. And then I'm going to demonstrate how you can get students who are elementary level. So we're talking about grades one to two level students, how they can get um, and step by step work this out by ear um, and we'll just play this at Christmas. <laughs> The main verse is in the minor key. And then the chorus, as you'll have just have heard there, goes into the relative major key. So 
Today I'm going to be referring and I'm going to be showing you a set of bespoke resources that we've created at the Curious Piano Teachers. Um, as I say, back in 2015, but we have had our graphic designer do a little bit of an update. Um, and we're going to be helping elementary level students, so again, grades one to two, break down the process of learning to play a Christmas carol by ear. Because it's always going to be so much easier for them and for you when you have resources and a structure in place. The first thing I'm going to say is, if you are bringing in playing by ear in your, in your Christmas lessons, the first thing is the student needs to know the song. Um, so that's the prerequisite. You need to know it already to the point where you can actually hum the tune. I might say to you, can you play um, the fairy on the Christmas tree by ear? I was actually earlier this week, I was trying to make up something random which everyone would go, Mm, no, I've never heard of that. Um, it was quite hard because I went and Googled it and realized actually the title exists. <laughs> but and obviously Gracie Fields, if you go onto YouTube, you can hear her, her sing this. I didn't actually know this one before. I don't know how many of you know the fairy on the Christmas tree. Um, <clears throat> but I couldn't sit down and play it by ear because I don't yet know it. So that is the first most important thing. So if you have a student and if you're wanting to use these resources that I'm going to be showing now, um, it's really, really important that <clears throat> if your student says, yeah, I know this, that you actually get a little bit of proof of learning. So ask them to sing it for you. Also know whether or not they really do know it. Um, if they don't, you will need to teach them the song. And that's the other option um, is just to actually take a week um, or a couple of weeks and, and teach them the song so that they really have that um, properly internalized and then they're ready to play it by ear. Or you might also um, just put failures out. What are the, um, what sort of repertoire, Christmas repertoire do your students know? What would they like to learn to play by ear? And then use the structure of these resources to create your own resource for a couple of um, Christmas carols and songs. It's always so much fun to create your own resources as well. So hopefully this structure will give you some, some inspiration. I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen now. Okay, hopefully everyone can see that. Yeah, just give me a thumbs up, Hannah. Is that showing okay? Yeah, okay, great. So <clears throat> here is the workbook. Um, and these are the points that I'm going to be going through just now really quickly. <clears throat> so again, know the carol, know the song. Um, we're not gonna be looking at pulse and rhythm cards, the possibilities provided through graphic pitch notation, how we can add the harmony. And then I'm gonna show you another workbook that we've got um, as well that we created last year. <clears throat> so first up here, we have the We Three Kings pulse cards. Now I know I'm probably, that's full screen and I'm not, but <clears throat> you'll be able to see me here. And I'm just going to demonstrate what exactly would happen. <clears throat> so we're gonna sing and <clears throat> This is, I mean, it's, it's, it's all perfectly fitting in because um, it's talking about three kings. And of course, this is triple meter. <clears throat> we three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we travel so far. You get the idea. <clears throat> so I'm singing and they are at the same time the students are, are feeling the pulse. Um, so demonstrate with this, if um, you have got um, a bouncy ball, the other thing you might get them to do is to bounce, catch the tennis ball in one hand, pass it to the other. <clears throat> we three kings of Orient are. So bounce, catch, pass, bounce, catch, pass. So what we're really doing there is just helping reinforce consciously this, this idea of the pulse of um, this Christmas carol. Then <clears throat> getting them to, giving them, and this is in the workbook, um, 
the words and getting them to identify just by putting a line in underneath the words that come in on the strong beat of the bar. So we, three kings of Orient are. And then we have also got some rhythm cards. And again, we have only, interestingly, three different rhythm ingredients in this particular um, in this particular piece. We have the ingredient of um, a minim and a crotchet. We have three crotchets, <clears throat> three quarter notes, and then we have a dotted minim. And that's it. That's for the, the verse in the chorus, that's all we have. So <clears throat> getting them then to work out, you might go back to these pulse cards again. <clears throat> so we had do, do, we. Of orient, and we can hear how that word orient is then um, you can actually see it as you're walking along those those three kings. So getting them to um, go from the pulse to being able to create the rhythm. Because it's always really good, it's one of our guiding principles um, at the Curious Piano Teachers to separate out all these elements in music, not to kind of just clump them all together, but to separate them out so the students really get to understand um, the elements, the ingredients of the music that they're working with. Here we've got some graphic pitch notation. So I'm going to sing a phrase, I'm just gonna hum that first phrase. And I want you to see if you can work out, is it number one, is it number two, is it number three, four or five? And hopefully you're coming up with this shape, this pattern for number one. So we can hear how it's going down. Do, 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 do. Coming up. Do, do. And back down. Do, do. The other thing that's worth noting as well is that it's actually helping a student to recognize where the words are different. But what's actually happening is you have the same melody because, <clears throat> of course, we three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar. We got the same melody going on in there, and actually, in the ver in the in the chorus, we have actually out of those four phrases, three of them are the same. But there's different words, and sometimes it's the words that it kind of makes it seem like it's different. And of course, when a student is playing something by ear and they can recognize, oh, okay, it's different words, but the melody, the rhythm is exactly the same. That can be really helpful. <clears throat> um, so once they have done that, you can then give them, um, and I would give my students a limited range of notes. I've been doing this in the key of E minor, okay? And of course, that first verse, uh, or that first, the, the first line, the first phrase of music, okay, is just using the minor pentascale. So it's just using those first five notes. Put little, you might want to put little um, stickers or little erasers just on those five notes so that they know when they come to play that, they don't need to wander off um, and because sometimes that can be the frustration with playing something by ear. They wander off, they're playing all sorts of notes um, and they get really lost and confused. So kind of just keeping those parameters um, really straightforward like that. The other thing you can do, um, and I was doing this last night, we have these little cards that you can, um, of the kings that you can cut out. And if you have floor stave, even if you don't have, um, this is called Manumat from, um, uh, it's available from um, Peter Simpson um, um, at Black Rock Music. Even if you don't, you can just use pieces of string, pieces of mask and tape, create your own floor stave. And then as the student works out those notes, Thank you. 
that they are putting them, again, just making it a much more tactile activity, putting it onto the floor stave, and then transferring that across. Um, and they'll have their rhythm cards, remember. So then they can write the melody and they can apply the rhythm to that as well. Okay, so moving on then to adding the harmony. And this is another page from the student workbook. You can see here that if they're a grade one, certainly a grade two student, there will be a lot of these triads that they will be familiar with. So E minor, A minor, D major, G major, C major. B major is going to be the new one, probably. Um, and that's fine because they know most of these triads from having played broken chords. So again, limiting the possibilities, you're giving them these and they're going to be working. This is something that they're going to be working out. Um, so just checking for, for proof of learning that they, they understand um, these, these triads. And then to ramp up um, this, the, the challenge, okay? Okay, we can, well, we can put it into, um, we've got this is another page in the workbook, the harmony, okay, of the verse. You can see here that first line's been done. So we have it's E minor, okay. Bar three is the B major, and then back into the E minor. If you remember what I said a moment ago, Bearing gifts we traverse, traverse so far, that's exactly the same. So of course the harmony is gonna be exactly the same. And then they can trial and error um, to work out for bar nine, what harmony they're going to need there. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> if you're wanting to ramp up um, the challenge for students who are um, you know, even a little bit further, get them to create an accompaniment pattern. When I was playing that, I was actually playing. I was just bringing that accompaniment like that. And finally, then, we have another resource inside the November, December 2021 Curiosity Box. And it's another play by ear and notate melody workbook. Here are the separate pages um, for Away in a Manger. So spread over four pages, you can see here that the rhythm is actually provided. And then you've got these little boxes, these little gray boxes where the student is going to, once they've worked out um, the notes that they need, they can write them in there. And then ultimately they're going to copy the rhythm and they're going to write on the stave notation, which is always a really good exercise getting students to do this. And then we also have a coloring page where um, it could potentially form some sort of studio coloring competition. So that is playing by ear and I am going to pass back over to Sally. Oh, we still can't hear you, Sally. No, You're still okay. there. I think, I think, sorry, my, my mouse was being silly there. But thank you so much for that, Sharon. Lots and lots of interesting um, I, thoughts coming in on the chat. In particular, I just want to pick up this one that um, children don't know Christmas carols, traditional Christmas carols in the same way any longer. And, you know, if you've got ideas for how we, we as piano teachers, we of course we're far more than just piano teachers, consider the impact you can make in actually helping children to learn these. And COVID has had a large part to play in the decline, but it's not the only reason. So I'm just thinking maybe you could have a Christmas sing-along on Zoom one, one weekend and you include the popular ones as well as the traditional ones like We Three Kings and stuff like that. So here's another idea that um, I'm going to share with you that we've got for um, helping people to to learn Christmas carols maybe to they've certainly got to know their Christmas songs for this particular one so I'm just going to share my screen now for a change 
and this is a fantastic um, Christmas challenge. This is for the intermediate and even the advanced students because you do actually really have to think quite carefully in sound to be able to play this game. I think it's a lot of fun and as you can see this was inspired by a community member Caroline Hand and then I think it was Sharon in 2018 this can be found in brought this to life and what it does is it is a series of carols that have been deconstructed. By that I mean the rhythm has been separated from the melody and there is a, also the time signature and it gives you full instructions on how to play it. Now this is something you can do with carols. You don't necessarily need to use this particular way of doing it but of course it's all written out for you here. So all you have to do is deconstruct a carol. So here are some of the carols that we've got and the way you play this game is you write out the carols and the songs. I tend to be a bit collective. Let's call it carols and songs. Christmas carols and songs. Get the students either to write out all the ones they know or get them which they forget. So get them to tick the ones they know and then you choose three of those and you get them to hum the phrase and maybe to tap the rhythm first. Once they've done all three, humming and tapping, then you start to play the game. So here, for example, we have got it um, all hidden underneath the melodic, the rhythmic and the time signature clue cards. And we're just going to show you what's underneath just immediately with this first one. A minute you're going to have to do a bit of work. So there's each one of these. So that's the component part of a rhythm. You got it? It's quite easy when I think you can see all of them. Do, 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 do. But it's interesting, isn't it? How if you take the rhythm away from the pitch, then you have to think in a very different way about this. And for our students, this is really quite tricky. As I say, it's an intermediate, and I've done it very, very successfully with a, a advanced students as well. And it's so, so much fun. All you have to do is choose those three carols or songs and then just write them out um, before the student comes for the next week. Write out the rhythm, write out the pitch. And it doesn't always have to be the first phrase. Let's see if you can do some of them. Now, I can't see the chat at the moment. So, over to you. Here is the first clue. If you can guess what this is, then stick it in the chat and Sharon or Hannah if you are able to come online and tell me as soon as somebody has got it. Here's the first one. What is the what is this carol? Have a think about that rhythm. I wonder whether anybody can get it. I always look at this one and think joy to the world and then I go oh no no it's not it's not the right one. Somebody got it, Sharon? We've had, okay, so we've had Joy to the World has come in a couple of times. Um, we've also had Frosty the Snowman. Uh -huh. Okay, let's have a look. There's, I think this time signature on the whole is a little bit of a red herring, yeah? But it's, it can be helpful, which I'll show you later. And what about, here we go. Frosty the Snowman. Do, do, oh, oh. There we go. It is Frosty the Snowman. But it's quite hard, I think. I'd love to hear everybody else's thoughts. If you think that's quite tricky to do, then stick, stick your thoughts in the chat. Or maybe you're super, super good at this. Here's the next one. Are you ready for the next one? Here we go. Ready for the first clue. Oh, it's the melodic challenge. I think this is where the time signature card comes in quite strongly because as soon as you know that then maybe it helps a little bit. Has anybody managed to get it yet? I wonder. We've got, I saw three ships coming in Sally with those two clues. Okay. <laughs> and indeed it is. The 
I find it fascinating how you look at the melody and you tend to assume, to start with, my default is 4-4. Four, four, and then I have to rethink it into a 6-8. I don't know about anybody else. Are you ready for the last one? Yeah, ready for the last one. You get the idea, hopefully, of how you can use this in your, um, especially towards the end of the, of the Christmas term. This is a very good one to do, this game, I think. Lots of fun for the last couple of weeks. So which clue are we going to get first? Ooh, we're going to get the time signature clue this time. <clears throat> I think this is, a, this is quite an easy one. We wish you a Merry Christmas, Christmas. And uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I find that children do know this one. And actually, it's a very, very popular one for them to actually learn. Um, so with the, uh, with the resource that we've got, there is a, a student record sheet. They write down in week one the three carols that they've chosen. Remember, you get them to sing it and then you get them to tap it. So it's not just enough. We need that proof of learning, as Sharon mentioned. They need to sing it and they need to tap the rhythm of it before you actually start the game. And if you choose your carols wisely, you can do this with elementary students, but you've just got to make sure that they are carols and songs that they do know. So as I say, it's a really good one for the end of the term. Um, yeah, and I think that's me about to stop my share and say, hope you enjoyed that one. And I think I'm going back over to Sharon to show us a little bit more. Yeah, lovely. Thank you so much. And I'm just going to reply to Anastasia there. Yeah, that particular challenge is, I'm pretty sure, the 2018. It is, um, yeah, 2018. Box. Um, and also the We Three Kings activity, you'll find it over in the November 2015 box. But I'm going to actually be showing you exactly where you can get all of these bits and pieces now. So let me share my screen. And this is, I know it'll be useful for those members who are on the call, just to kind of be refreshed where everything is um, and where you can easily access things. Uh, and also then for those of you who are currently not members, um, we will be giving you, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a link in a little while where you can go and you can sign up for a, a one month free trial, which will give you access um, to all. I'm going to just actually start scrolling because um, these are all of the curiosity boxes. Um, you can see we've been doing this from 2015. So there is a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. It's not all about Christmas stuff. Obviously that's just what we're pulling out for today. <laughs> Um, so here I'm going to stop at Christmas Repertoire, November 2015. I'm just going to highlight a couple of things. So um, we have inside the resources, there you go, um, student workbook, the pulse cards, um, the words, those are the cards that you can use for the um, floor, Steve, perfect pitch, the rhythm cards, small and large, another couple of resources, and of course, um, Christmas sign story, Susie Goose, you'll be able to find that in there. Sally is going to be doing that in just a moment. Um, so that is where you can find that. Um, I'm now going to go up to the November 2016, which is the social pianist. I'm going to highlight a couple of resources in here. We have, um, for example, now there's one I'm guessing that most of students will know, walking in the air. And in this video, Sally takes you through a step-by-step -step approach to teaching walking in the air by rote as a simple duet. Really. It's so, it's so lovely to do that one. Kids absolutely adore it. And all, all you do as the teacher is you do this little, yeah, with the chord structure and you just teach them to play. And they could, you could, you can just do it with four phrases. That's all there is, and they, and they will pick it up really, really quickly. So, um, just a, a, a lovely, simple piece to do. That is. Yeah. Sorry, Sharon. No, that's, all, that's, that's all, absolutely fine. Thank you, Sally. Um, so that's where you'll find that um, in the social pianist. 
um, which is November 29, 2016. And then the other one I want to highlight is there is, again, Arabian dance from the Nutcracker. And again, this is a demonstration video. Sally, here's how easy it is to teach this by ear. So there's another one um, by ear. Um, uh, I'm just going to head over. We have, again, all of these webinar replays. Um, this is, as I say, Sally is going to be doing a sign story in just a moment, but there is an, another sign story in this um, curiosity box using... Um, So you can watch that um, and get some more inspiration there. I'm going to go back really quickly. Let's move on to the next Christmas box, which is November, December 2018. So we have this one here, a Christmas full of harmony. <clears throat> Help your pupils develop their understanding of harmony through Christmas carols and songs. Um, so let's remember it's that we can have very clear learning objectives with um with this Christmas repertoire as well. Yes, they want to play it, but we can also be teaching them so much more. Um, and reinforcing any harmony work that we've been doing over the year as well. I'm just gonna click in here, I think, to videos. So again, there is um, a little bit of background and in introducing triads, the primary triads and inversions, easy to play triads, you know, some tips and some tricks. I didn't get to that in my presentation earlier on, but you'll get a little bit more on how you can add an accompaniment. Um, we have, you can observe lessons in harmony. So Alison Matthews um, teaches winter themed music to two students. Um, I interviewed Dr. Christopher Fisher um, about a couple, of, a couple of his arrangements, Silent Night and Okami Manual. Over in the resources here, there is again, for example, Christmas lead sheets. Um, I'm not going to take too much longer. I'm just going to keep whizzing, but just to show you that there is lots and lots of stuff here. Um, I love I love the way in our in our new website, Sharon, that actually you can see the resources. Whereas in the old website, you had to click on it to see what it actually looked like. And I love the way Sharon is just going over all these resources and it immediately shows you a little um, glance of what it looks like. I get very excited about that. And I should say as well, you can actually, the, the overview, you can stop at the overview of these boxes um, and you get a little summary of what you can find, just where you can get started, what's next. And then, for example, we will put in what um, we and what members have been filling in the highlight of that particular book. So in this one, um, this is where you will find the um, the Christmas challenge, okay? The Curious Christmas Challenge that Sally's just been going through. That is there. There is also, um, what else do we have here? We have got Christmas Rhythm Games, okay? So again, where you have a list, um, if I maybe just come off the hover at the minute, um, where you can see here a list of Christmas songs and then you're matching it up with the Christmas rhythm. Um, Christmas holiday fun, a little resource here. I'm just gonna click in, you can see there. <clears throat> um, you know, make some musical decorations for your Christmas tree. While start so, shopping, identify five Christmas songs playing in the shop. So this is, this is a really good one for the last lesson of the term and you want to give them something to do over the Christmas holidays that they have to produce at the first lesson. Um, and it, they, they really enjoy doing that, I find, just my students have. There, you go. there we have another arrangement of music yeah. in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also the webinar, um, this is actually, uh, I don't know if you remember this Sally, the pajama party that yeah. um, Sally was at my house that particular year. <laughs> um, we have Lisa Milne, um, Samantha Coates, different people and of course then Online. you... They were in Australia by the way, we were in <laughs> Ireland and they were in Northern Ireland, they were in Australia. They didn't get away. So it's quite, quite a bit of fun, um, those are all up there as well. Um, okay, I think I've got one more box to go. So. This was last year's box um, at Christmas time. So a curious Christmas. And this is where we have exclusive commissioned repertoire um, for uh, beginner through to intermediate students. Um, where to start? I mean, in the videos, you have practice ideas. 
for um, there's six practice strategies for um, deck the halls. And this is one of the um, three tunes featured in the Christmas Crackers medley that was arranged for us by Pam Wedgwood. We have how to use salt for bubbles and Christmas tree, which is a resource that we are giving away in just a moment. Um, we have Wendy Stevens, for example, in the webinar came and joined us. And she has a wonderful um, nutcracker rhythm pop exploration. Um, did a webinar on that again, just walks you through exactly what, what the resource does. Um, inside then the resources here, some of you were asking earlier, um, Elaine Ney, he is born, the arrangement by Alan Bullard that we kickstarted the webinar with this morning, which Sally played so beautifully for us, that is there to download. Um, there we go, um, a simple three pitch song for beginner students to sing with piano accompaniment. Um, there's the colouring in page. There's that playing by ear in the tit workbook for a way in a manger. Um, this is the Christmas Cracker by Pam Wedgwood, so a medley um, which includes Deck the Halls, Good King Lancelot, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And there is obviously so much more besides because that's just the Christmas stuff. So if you are not yet a member, of the community of the curious piano teachers um i'm going to be going and just putting a link in in just a moment where you can go over and you can get your one free month um membership trial and you can go and explore those resources and lots of other resources design Sally. thank you very much sharon for that lovely overview um and i've been joined by by the lovely Susie Goose, and, and she's very excited to share her moment with you. But I was very excited, I, I get very excited quite a lot really, don't I? Um, to count up, I think it was yesterday or the day before, we have now have 80 curiosity boxes. So Sharon's just scrolled through all those boxes and there are 80 of them. And it's no wonder we're all forgetting what is in all our boxes. However, our new website does have this fantastic search facility. So if you go to the, I'm curious, today I'm curious about, and you put in a search term, search as Susie Goose, you will find the Susie Goose sound story. Or if you just put in Christmas, it will bring up all those Christmas resources for you. Um, I, I, I love the fact that we've got some members on the call and thank you so much for coming along. And you're all saying you've forgotten what we've got and it all sounds very new and i was just thinking i've completely forgotten that we of course have the nutcracker uh, rhythm cups by wendy stevens absolutely going there for next week so let's get on because we haven't got very much time left i'd like you to meet susie goose now this susie goose has only just come to live with me she uh she was in a shop the mulberry bush just up the road on wednesday and i went in and immediately I went, well, it's Susie Goose. Now, Susie Goose has got a bit of a reputation around here because I've created um, several years ago now a sound story based on this book, Susie Goose and the Christmas Star. And it's by a writer, a children's author and illustrator called uh, Peter Horacek, Horacek. And there you go. And you can see I've actually got him to sign the book because uh, we have all the necessary permissions to use this. Sound stories are fantastic ways of engaging your beginners who have only been having lessons since September, who probably aren't reading notation yet, who are still really working very orally and discovering the piano. And I first started to use sound stories and I actually used the one called Shh, which you can see possibly over there on the, uh, on the shelf um, several years ago. And the thing with sound stories is you can pick up any book. They don't have to be Christmas. They can be all the way through the year. I've got another one over there. I probably can't see. You probably can't see. It's called Peace at Last. It's by Jill Murphy. Is that right? Jill Murphy, it's a very famous one. Most children read it at school or have it. And that one again is great because it has lots of 
possibilities for sound effects and for using the piano to bring it to life. So with Susie Goose, we have a resource that will help you to do it. But let me just take you through, first of all, some of the ideas. Now, obviously, the illustrations are brilliant. And I can do this with a seven year up to seven, maybe even up to eight. It's not the fact that it's an easy reading book that really matters. Um, so for example, we have Susie Goose. And the first thing, there's a beautiful picture of Susie Goose. The first thing I would suggest you do is you find the hero of the story. In this case, it's Susie Goose. And um, encourage your student to create a little musical idea, a musical motif for Susie. Depending on the student, it will depend on how much help they need. But in the sound story for this, I've actually put in, uh, made up a little chart. It says, Susie Goose likes to honk everywhere. Honk, 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 stop Susie Goose. And you encourage your student to either play, they could either play the rhythm on one note, you know, Susie Goose likes to, and then maybe they get adventurous and they do two notes, Susie Goose likes to honk everywhere. Honk, 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 stop Susie Goose. That's all it needs to be. And you get them to write that idea down so that they can repeat it. Because, of course, repetition is really important in music. And then, with this book, with this story, and with quite a lot of stories, they have stars. And, of course, you know, children, the one song they do know is Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Can you teach them to play it? Yes, of course you can. And um, in last year's Curiosity Box, the 2021, there is a handout for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star with a lovely accompaniment that I've, I've written for that as well. So get them to do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, for example, as part of the story. And the third thing that you can then do with Sound Story is look at all the actions and all the scenarios that are there and help the children to bring those to life. So for example, ha ha ha, look at this one. What does it say? She, um, she slid really, really fast and whoosh, flew high up in the sky. Now, I'm sure with you, your, your mind is immediately going something like, and I'm gonna get Susie Goose to help me because I might do this with my students. Whoosh, wouldn't they love to do that? And of course, you know, technically, that is helping them to play, to play with a really lovely fluid arm and use the whole keyboard, which is what we want them to do. So this isn't just about bringing the story to life. We're being pianists, we're helping them to be musicians. So you look as much as you can at the story. There's, she saw a fence, climbed on top, stretched very, very high and jumped. So she saw a fence. We'll have a look what I suggested in the sound story in a minute. But you could get her to get them to play the two black notes. She saw a fence, climbed on top, stretched up very, very high and jumped, but not enough speed. Yeah, high, there's the concept of going high, splat down below. Again, lovely arm movement being used there. So by using, oh, there's another one as well, which is where, oh, I love this page on here. Um, she walks and she gets very lost and she's very alone. Now, some children, of course, feel like that um, sometimes. And so this music is a really lovely way of helping them to express that, get them to think about the words that, 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 they, how they feel when they feel a bit alone, and maybe give um, make up a little bit of music yourself. And just get them to play on an A, a B, and a C, like Susie lost all by herself in that snowstorm. So let me just very quickly show you um, that page. Here she goes, share. So here she goes. Um, and this has been newly redone again. This was probably back in the 2016 box. Um, Sharon can confirm that, but uh, it will give you the link to where you can find the book. 
Here's that little rhyme I said about Susie Goose, you can get them to write it down, famous song about a star. And then it gives you the cues and actually it gives the student your cues. So you get this printed out, you give it to the student, you send it home with them. And the parents will love to do this on the whole. If they're involved, they'll really love it. And if you have a Christmas um, piano party at the end of term, this is what your beginners can play. Absolutely what your beginners can play, yeah. So there you see I'm encouraging them to play these notes in any of the moods that they come up with. She hears from her friends and you give a grand performance. And something I also love to do is I love to get them to record it and then they can send it to grandparents and they can send it to other relatives and friends that they know. Music is for sharing, remember. And we, we've got this box called the Social Pianist because at Christmas that's what we need to be. We need to have these Christmas ideas at our fingertips, right from our beginners all the way up to ourselves. And hopefully what we've been sharing with you today has inspired you to go away and see if you can uh, think about how you can give all your students something really meaningful and musical to share this Christmas. Sharon. Lovely, thank you, Sally. And just to confirm that that is the um, November 2015 Curiosity Box. <clears throat> that you will find that particular, particular software. So I'm just going to bring this back on here again. There we go. Um, I have put a link there for the free membership trial. I'm just going to really quickly share my screen. Okay, so that link, you can go through there um, and select that you will not be charged today you get that free trial um, and I've also and I see Hannah has put that as well we've put the resource if I can find where I there is um, the Christmas yep, there we go so you can check out this. Um, yes. um, Christmas yeah. So do click on all those links that you've been sent. I think we'd love to say a huge thank you to everybody for coming. Um, the uh, Susie Goose is in the 2016 uh, box, I think you said, didn't you, Sharon? Which box did you say? That's the latest version. 2015. 2015 box, yeah. Um, um, I think I'm going to play everybody out with a Christmas cracker by Pamela Wedgwood and this is one of our specially commissioned uh, pe Christmas pieces, you won't find this anywhere else uh, but on the Curious Piano Teachers and if you like you can have a listen and see if you can um, just take away the three carols that we you'll hear in this particular piece. I'm just going to say a huge thank you from Hannah who wants to say something? Hannah? Yes, I just wanted to say thank you both because that's been an absolutely brilliant um, summary of our Christmas resources and I've been trying to field your um, your uh, your questions in the chat and things as well so I've been on two devices doing that so so um, it's been great to hear people who've been using the stuff already. Thank you both so much for giving this rundown and we'd love to hear um, this piece. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So. We're, I'll play the piece through and then I think it will be goodbye from all of us. Okay, thanks so much for coming.
Thank you so much for being here. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming. <laughs>